John Adams once said there's been more air propagated by the press in the last 10 years than an entire hundred in 1798. So this video comes to you in three parts, like an atom. News isn't fake so much as it's never held accountable in the United States. And I think the best way to imagine this is news like a product, like anything else. And it's a totally unregulated market in the United States. The news is a bit like supplements. So let's talk a little bit about this BuzzFeed news um, press report that you know Donald Trump instructed Cohen to lie about building a uh, Trump Tower to Congress. Well, I'm not saying it's fake news at all. It could be a totally entirely correct report. Um, but let's look at the story itself. So the two reporters, who are of good, este of good esteem, they spoke to two law enforcement officials that are close to, quote, the Mueller investigation. Did they see any of the documents themselves? No. They're taking the word of law enforcement agents that are supposedly close to the Mueller investigation and have seen the documents that said that Cohen told the Mueller investigation that Donald Trump instructed him to lie to Congress about building the Trump Tower on a specific timeline. That's the basis of the story. So what can we glean from this? Well, if the reporters haven't seen um, the, the material themselves and they're relying upon, you know, LEA uh, that are close to the Mueller investigation, and they have every right to maybe trust that these are, you know, authoritative figures, they run with the, re the report. Um, so what does, this, what does this mean? Does this mean it's, you know, true, fake? Well, I would argue what it really means is, at its core, it's gossip. Um, so let's talk about the first part. The first part, I want to talk about how the news isn't fake, it's unaccountable. And I, in order to do that, I want to talk about Judith Miller, who was a reporter for the New York Times, a kind of famous reporter for the New York Times. And uh, as you know, the U.S. press was categorically wrong about the war in Iraq, um, specifically about its ties to Al-Qaeda and its weapons of mass destruction. Now, Judith Miller was a reporter for the New York Times during this era in the war in Iraq invasion, and she published many a report um, about Saddam's weapons of mass destruction due to information she gained from the CIA and the government. Now, that information turned out to be wrong and false. So she was relying on reports from the government, <clears throat> and those reports turned out to be entirely rubbish. Um, what does this mean? It means she was wrong. <laughs> she was Miller was wrong. And the stuff the New York Times published was wrong. And the opinion that it swayed in the public was wrong. Uh, and there was never really accountability held. Yes, some people know that Judith Miller was wrong. Some people have questioned her, etc. This you can also see um, happen in the financial crisis in 2008, when uh, Kramer, I believe his name is, with his show on CNBC or MSNBC, CNBC, I believe it is, was talking about how the, you know, the market is very bullish and they should buy, 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 right before the market collapsed. Totally wrong. Um, was he held accountable besides the Jon Stewart show? No, not really. He still owns and runs the Street magazine and uh, life continues for him. Uh, the, the press is a bit like the police. They, uh, they kind of guard their own. Yeah, you know, sometimes they mess up, but eh. So that's one. Two, let's talk about Brian Ross, who's the chief investigative correspondent for ABC News. So this, this past year, <laughs> Brian Ross reported that uh, Donald Trump had instructed Michael Flynn during the campaign to engage with talks with Russia while he was running the campaign. Uh, Brian Ross reported this out, uh, and then it turned out to be totally incorrect within a few hours. And that's a big claim. <laughs> turned out, no, Michael Flynn had never been instructed to do that uh, during the campaign. He was instructed after Donald Trump won the election to establish some sort of communication <laughs> with Moscow. Um, ABC issued a traction on Twitter and on their you know, website, and uh, Brian Ross was put on suspension. Uh, and then he was, after a few weeks and the hubbub died down, he was brought back and still works for ABC as a chief investigative reporter. Now, Brian Ross, okay, you know, fair enough. But Brian Ross was also during the 2004, you know, war in Iraq. He published um, a few reports citing anthrax in, in regards to uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq that were totally false. 
Um, 2006, he wrote reports talking about how there was ties to Al-Qaeda in Iraq. It turned out to be totally false. Um, maybe not Iraq, maybe it was Pakistan. So a lot of things to remember. Anyway, they turned out to be totally false. Um, so for the last 15 years, he's been pu publishing bombshell reports that turn out to just be incorrect. You know, his so-called sources were just wrong. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, was not a smart person or was trying to tell the truth or was trying to report information, but those sources were just wrong. And the news does this all the time, and Brian Ross continues to be chief, you know, investigative reporter for ABC News. You know, nothing's really changed. Judith Miller is still a high, relatively high-profile reporter. That was my second point. The third point is the story of Quinn Norton. Now, you may not have heard of Quinn Norton, but she's a kind of freelance writer. Uh, she writes about technology and computers, and she's a good writer. You can read her stuff on Medium. That's how I first came across her about two years ago. Um, she, she does some interesting writing on digital journalism. Anyway, she's kind of a freelance writer. Uh, she also worked for Wired Magazine at a time and was friends with Aaron Schwartz, one of the founders of Reddit who ended up killing himself after the government wept, went after him. So she's an interesting character for sure. Now, <clears throat> early in 2018, uh, the New York Times announced they had brought on Quinn Norton as a tech columnist. And within 24 hours of New York Times announcing they brought on Quinn Norton as a tech columnist, uh, they had dumped her. People had gone through her Twitter um, and found that she had some association with Weave, who's a kind of renegade programmer who's uh, a white supremacist, um, and that she was, quote, friends with him or supported uh, you know, white supremacists. That was the headlines that were run all across uh, moderate media outlets um, as they dug through her Twitter six to eight years ago. Um, now, is she a white supremacist? No. Does she espouse any white supremacy views? No. In fact, a lot of her arguments are talking and arguing for transgender rights um, and arguing to imagine race complexly and, you know, championing the rights of, you know, minorities. Uh, but this requires nuance and digging through somebody's tweets or, you know, responses from, you know, 2012 <laughs> makes for a better headline. Um, and so as soon as people got a hold of the fact that Quinn Norton was uh, going to work for the New York Times, they poured over her Twitter, they found some damning evidence, and started to publish articles saying, oh, New York Times, you know, uh, hires white supremacist friendly uh, writer. Now, this is all nonsense, of course, but within 24 hours, all the headlines of her name <laughs> had white supremacist <laughs> next to it, which were totally false. And I remember sitting at my desk um, on the terminal, watching the Bloomberg terminal, just update me, update me, update me in real time as headline after headline came out um, about how Quinn Norton, you know, was such, such a shady character that, you know, it was, it, was, it was unbelievable that the New York Times could hire this writer and journalist, which was totally, you know, not the case. I've been following her writing for many years prior to this. Nonetheless, the New York Times had no backbone in this instance and immediately dropped her. <laughs> they hired and fired her within basically 24 hours. Um, and who is the person to, you know, come to her defense and tell the nuanced story of, like, Quinn Norton? Well, it was Quinn Norton herself. She ended up publishing a long uh, story, kind of an uh, analysis of what happened uh, on Medium, which you're more than welcome to read. It's quite an interesting read on how Twitter can ruin careers. Um, so my point is, on the third, the third point, the Quinn Norton story, is that there was a writer that I quite enjoy reading and I saw the media pick her apart within 24 hours and generate headlines and news articles that were very near libelous. Um, but of course, in the United States, it's impossible to sue basically for libel or slander. In uh, news media, it's just, let's be real. Um, so for all intents and purposes, we have a very unregulated market. Now, does the story still exist? Yes. And life went on. Um, so with these three, three things in mind, I, I kind of want to like guide your attention to the idea that, and I think we all know it intuitively, which is that the domains of our expertise, we understand really well. And when we're reading a paper, whether it be the New York Times or the Washington Post, or reading an article, and they happen to be ex discussing something that relates to our domain of expertise, and whether that's you're an engineer or an architect or a mathematician or a historian or a marine biologist, and they start talking about marine biology or architecture, and you're reading this, you know, generally, the response is, what are they talking about? They got that wrong. That's, no, they're simplifying it that there. 
that's this article is rubbish. You know, I'm a marine biologist. I don't know what they're talking about about you know seals. Um, and we all have a tendency to do this when it comes to our own domain of expertise. And we read something you know in, in the news and the press, and we're like, wait, that's that's wrong. They don't understand that. And yet we grant truth carte blanche to everything else that's not in our domain of expertise. So you know the the article in one A about marine biology. When you're a marine biologist, you're like, yeah. They got this all wrong. Flipped to the new paper on politics and international news, and you read it and accept it as truth 100%. Well, in reality, the likelihood is those are just as equally flawed and you know shambolic <laughs> as the one on marine biology. Uh, just that the news is presented in such a way, and they present themselves in such a way uh, that they're kind of you know don't get things wrong, and that they do a very good job of holding themselves accountable, which I would argue, not so much. Anyway. Just a, a, th a thought for you guys this morning. Hope you have a good one.